Hello everyone. Welcome to Analog Electronic Circuits lecture number 12. So today we are going to derive the F beta and the F t uh, that is the beta cutoff frequency and the unity gain frequency for a BJT and then later on for the MOSFET. So first of all, let's define the beta cutoff frequency. So it is the frequency at which the current gain of a BJT falls by 3 dB from its maximum value. Right, so the mid band or the maximum value is beta DC or HFE or beta zero. So we'll uh, you know go through in details about it in a moment. Let's go to the unity gain frequency or bandwidth FT. It is called as a transition frequency. It is defined as the frequency at which the current gain of the BJT becomes unity, unity or zero dB. And FT is also the figure of merit for a bipolar transistor. Now let's look at the representation of this, uh, you know, the magnitude plot of HFE. HFE is nothing but the beta. So your beta also changes with the frequency, as you can see, as we go to higher and higher frequency, and we go 3 dB down, right? That is beta naught upon the root two. You will get F beta. That is the beta cutoff frequency. And when your HFE becomes one. Uh, that is a unity gain or zero dB. That particular frequency is called as a transition frequency as marked over here in the frequency response, right? And this is at a very, very high frequency. Your FT is very, very high compared to F beta also, right? So let's start with the derivation for the uh, beta cutoff frequency first. So uh, for a beta cutoff frequency derivation for a BJT, Let's start drawing the high frequency model of an NPN BJT. So now to find the short circuit current gain, we will sort the collector and the signal ground terminal. Okay, that means we'll make VCE is equal to zero. So over here we have a NPN BJT. This is a base emitter and collector. Here are the three currents, uh, your base current and collector current. Input side we have VBE and here the output is sorted right uh, collector terminal and the signal ground over here is sorted together right this is to find the short circuit current gain okay the current gain over here will be the output current divided by the input current that will be ic upon ib now let's proceed forward so now we'll replace let me just expand it a little yeah so now what do we do is now we replace the bjt by its high frequency model. So between the base and the emitter, we have R pi. And between the base and the emitter, we have C pi parasitic capacitance. Between the base and the collector, we have C mu parasitic capacitance. And between the collector and the, uh, I mean, and the emitter, we have GM into V pi, right? And here we have marked input source as Vs and the current IV flows through it. Now, and at the output terminal, we will have to short circuit it, right? So let's do that. Let me take red color and short circuit the collector terminal and the signal ground, right? So we will short circuit because we want to find the short circuit current gain. So we can uh, add over here some details. Let me just slightly magnify. Yeah, so we have short circuited the collector terminal and the signal ground and we'll add the, some details over here. The details are as follows. Uh, we short circuit collector and the signal ground because uh, short circuit to find short circuit collector and signal ground to find short circuit current gain, short circuit current gain. So you can easily relate over here, the current gain over here is a function of frequency also, because here we have C pi and C mu, which are frequency dependent. So what will be the current gain over here? The current gain will be, if you, if you see carefully the current gain AI, right? The current gain will be given by IC, that is the output current divided by the input current, that is IB. 
okay let me rewrite it one more time ib right so that is what we are supposed to find the short circuit current gain ai that is ic upon ib and ic upon ib we know what it is ic upon ib is nothing but your beta value in 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 your data set it is written as hfe so basically we have to find the expression of uh, hfe or beta that is ic upon ib right so that will mark over here okay fine now from this data we need to find the various currents flowing through the capacitors and the resistors so let's start doing it so here we have current ib flowing into the base terminal then the current which is flowing into the uh, resistor r phi will be given by we can write over here we can write it as v phi divided by r phi okay the current flowing through the resistor r phi will be v phi upon r phi and then the current flowing through this capacitor will be it will be v phi divided by then the current will be 1 upon s into c phi so that is the impedance i mean uh, v phi upon resistance right so for a capacitor is impedance the impedance of a capacitor will be 1 upon sc so here it will be 1 upon s into c phi similarly the current flowing through the c mu capacitor okay the current flowing through the c mu capacitor will be given by v phi divided by 1 divided by s into c mu okay so why do we write v phi divided by 1 upon s c mu because 1 upon s c mu is the impedance offered by this capacitor okay as i have already told you the impedance of a capacitor is given by 1 upon s c right and uh, now we will equate this equations we will apply the kcl at node uh, at the base terminal that is at node b right so kcl at node b gives us that what is the incoming current we are applying the kcl at node b incoming current is ib rest all are outgoing current so here is number 1 v pi upon r pi is the outgoing current then v pi upon 1 upon s into c pi is the outgoing current and then uh, v pi minus 0 because collector terminal is connected to the signal ground so v pi divided by 1 upon s into c mu is the another current so only entering current is ib and all others are leaving current so we can write ib is equal to v pi divided by r pi plus v pi divided by 1 upon sc pi plus v pi minus 0 divided by 1 upon sc mu right so now we'll take v pi common and in the bracket we get 1 upon r pi plus s into c pi plus s into c mu right so ib will be equal to v into this impedance right and uh, that is the equation number 1 so now next we apply the kcl at node c so kcl at node c will give you there are three currents right the incoming currents are uh, this v pi divided by 1 upon sc mu and uh, ic is the incoming current and outgoing current is gm into v pi right so we'll write that exactly over here gm into v pi is equal to v pi divided by 1 upon sc mu plus ic correct so that is what we will write and now we'll write ic will be equal to if you take ic on this side i mean uh, ic on one side and all the other terms on that side we'll get ic is equal to gm v pi minus s into v pi into c mu right so from here we take v, v pi common and ic will be equal to gm minus s c mu into v pi right and uh, what do we want actually we want basically ai and what is ai current gain right short circuit current gain it will be ic upon ib so from equation number 1.1 we have ib and from equation number 1.2 we have ic so we'll divide them so we'll get by dividing we get ic upon ib will be equal to gm in gm minus s into c mu into v pi divided by v pi into 1 upon r pi plus s c pi plus s c mu so from here v pi and v pi gets cancelled and ic upon ib is nothing but beta it is also mentioned as uh, hfe in the data sheet right they normally mention this term parameter in term, in H, uh, in your data sheet and uh, your beta is equal to hfe is will be equal to gm minus s into c mu divided by 1 upon r pi plus s c pi plus s into c mu we call this equation number 1.3 
Now, at the frequency for which this model is valid, we can assume that GM is much, much greater than omega into C mu. So let's see that how that happens. That means GM minus S into C mu can be approximated as GM. Now, the typical values of GM is basically 50 milliampere per volt. For frequencies around 100 megahertz, the C mu value will be 0.2 picofarad, right? Therefore, omega C mu value, which will be 2 pi f into C mu, will be around 0.12 pi milli, which is quite less as compared to GM. So, therefore, we can assume that GM is much, much greater than omega C mu, right? So we can rewrite this expression number 1.3 as follows. So HFE will be equal to beta, which will be equal to GM upon 1 upon R pi plus S into C pi plus C mu, right? We'll take R pi up. It will uh, divide the numerator and denominator by R pi. So we will get uh, HFE is equal to beta is equal to R pi, in, R pi into GM divided by 1 plus S R pi into C pi plus C mu. Right. And uh, now we know that GM is given by IC upon VT and R pi is given by beta VT upon IC cube. So if you multiply both IC cube and VT will get cancelled and you'll get beta. So the product of GM into R pi is nothing but beta that we call it as a beta DC or beta, beta zero. So HFE, which is a frequency dependent term will be given by uh, actually this is frequency dependent. So we could have written over here. HFE of S. Okay, let me rewrite it. Okay, it's a function of frequency. So we could write HFE of S, which is a function of frequency, which is the short circuit current gain is given by beta zero or beta DC divided by one upon S R pi into C pi plus C mu, where beta zero or beta DC is the low frequency value of HFE or beta. Okay. So up till now, any doubts? Yeah. So equation number 1.4 is important. It tells you that your current gain, I mean, uh, your uh, short circuit current gain is frequency dependent. Where beta naught or beta DC is the low frequency value of HFE or beta. Okay. Now let's go to the observations for this ex, uh, expression number 1.4. So observations are that the current gain of the BJT at higher frequency is a complex quantity. That means it will have a magnitude as well as space, correct? And then we can calculate the magnitude as well as space for equation number 1.4. So uh, we can calculate H of uh, HFE of S will be equal to beta zero divided by one plus uh, S into R pi into C pi plus C mu. Now at physical frequencies by substituting S equal to J omega, we have HFE of J omega will be equal to beta naught divided by one plus J omega R pi into C pi plus C mu. We call this expression number 1.5. Up till now it is clear. Okay. So that means what? Therefore we can say that HFE has a single pole response with a 3 dB frequency at omega equal to omega beta. Okay. So this expression over here has a, a pole frequency, which is given by omega beta. Okay. And which is given by uh, omega beta is equal to one upon R pi into C pi plus C mu. Okay. And in terms of plot, we will have over here, omega is the angular frequency. Omega beta is the beta cutoff frequency and beta naught is the uh, mid band value and HFE is the, I mean, the current gain, uh, which is function of frequency, right? So now we can write it in terms of F beta also. F beta is the frequency in Hertz. F is the frequency in Hertz. And F beta is the beta cutoff frequency. And we can write it as one upon two pi into R pi into C pi plus C mu. So this equation number uh, 1.7 clearly reveals that your, uh, you know, since R pi is a function of network design, right? R pi depends upon the biasing condition your F beta also is a function of biasing condition. Okay. Now, since we have a R pi term over here, which depends upon the biasing, right? Because R pi will be beta VT upon ICQ, right? Let me check that. Yeah, R pi is beta VT upon ICQ. So it depends upon the collector current, the biasing value of the collector current. Therefore, we can say that, let me go back over here. 
that your beta cutoff frequency is dependent upon the biasing condition of the circuitry. Okay. Now let's proceed forward. Now we can write this same formula in this form. HFE of J omega will be equal to beta naught uh, divided by one plus J omega upon omega uh, beta. Right. So we will let me write over here HFE of J omega is equal to beta naught divided by one plus J. What is omega beta? Omega beta is nothing but two pi. I mean R pi into C pi plus C mu. So it's nothing but uh, one plus J R pi into C pi plus C mu. Which we have already, uh, you know, this is already the formula number. Let me check it out. The number. Okay. Give me a moment to go up. Okay. Yeah. Here it is. Formula number 1.5. It is same. So it will be beta naught divided by 1 plus j omega. Omega will come. That was missing. So here it is. Beta naught upon 1 plus j omega r pi into c pi plus c mu. So which is can be written as this form because omega beta is nothing but 1 upon r pi into c pi plus c mu. So this and this are the same thing. They are one and the same. Okay. Now we can write in terms of, uh, you know, uh, frequency f. So HFE will be HFE of j 2 pi f will be equal to beta naught divided by 1 plus j f upon f beta. Right. And now if you want to write the magnitude of it, it can be written as mod of HFE will be equal to. Let me just take it slightly up. So mod of HFE will be equal to beta naught divided by square root of one plus F upon F beta the whole square. Okay. So this is a complex uh, number, right? For this complex number, we can calculate its magnitude as well as space because it is frequency dependent. So mod of HFE will be equal to beta naught divided by square root of one plus F upon F beta the whole square. Okay. So this is the magnitude response. So magnitude response, if we plot it, that is what we will get. Let me just slightly zoom out a little. Okay. Yeah, I have zoomed it out. So over here, concentrate on equation number 1.8, right? So equation number 1.8, what does it tell you? It tells you that HFE is a function of frequency. And when you go to higher and higher frequencies, you will achieve a beta cutoff frequency and beta naught is the mid band value of uh, HFE and beta naught upon when you go beta naught upon root two, that is C to be down, you can calculate F beta, right? So in the high frequency range, as the frequency increases, as you can clearly see, as the frequency increases, your mod of HFE will fall down. The current gain will fall down. This is also one of the cause why the gain of a BJT amplifier falls in the high frequency range other than the something by the parasitic capacitance, which we have seen earlier. Okay. Let me slightly uh, move in. Yeah. And we can see clearly that at F equal to F beta, this will become beta naught upon root two, right? When F is equal to F beta, this will become square root of two and HFE mod of HFE will become beta naught upon root two at F equal to F beta your current gain will be given by beta naught divided by root two, right? So F beta, that is a beta cutoff frequency is the frequency at which the short circuit current gain, which is HFE, mod of HFE of BJT falls to one upon root two times its value admit frequency. So its value admit frequency is beta naught, right? So that will justify the derivation which we have written earlier. And this plot is the magnitude plot for the HFE, okay? Fine, where the bandwidth of the amplifier is F beta. That is the beta cutoff frequency. Fine. Now let's proceed forward. Now we will see some more details about it. Let me go over here. So we'll see that how the beta cutoff frequency will behave as for the bias configuration. Okay. So we'll see the topic. Uh, we'll, we'll investigate the topic next of F beta as a function of bias configuration. So we'll compare basically common emitter configuration for a BJT and 
common base configuration for a NPN VJT. Okay. So now we'll see for the HFE or beta variation. See the variation of HFE or beta width frequency will approach the following relationship, which will be given by HFE is equal to HFE mid divided by one plus J into F upon F beta, right? This is equation number 1.10. You just wait, hold on. Where this equation came from, we'll just now investigate. Okay. Now, we know that for a simple RC network, where we have applied input over here and output V out is over here, R1 is in series and C1 is in parallel with the output, we get a typical high frequency response like this. That means the gain will fall at higher frequency. And the cutoff frequency for this system will be F1 which will be given by 1 upon 2 pi R1 C1, whose entire gain can be written as V out upon V in can be written as 1 upon 1 plus J F upon F1, right? So we'll call this equation as 1.11. Now, if you compare 1.10 and 1.11, they both, both are generally the same, right? Your HFE is the current gain, here it is a voltage gain, but still it's a gain, right? So the both 1.10 and 1.11 are exactly the same, except that if you remove the multiplying factor HFE mid, okay? So if you remove HFE mid from the equation number 1.10, then both 1.10 and 1.11 are same, okay? So next, next what we will do is we will be plotting HFE and HFB plot on the same curve. So let me show it to you. Okay, now concentrate on this. This blue color curve we have already seen before. Okay, so let me mark certain things over here. This will be like, yeah. So this is the mid band value for HFE, right? And this is the HFE frequency, I mean, a frequency response versus your, I mean, the current gain versus the frequency. And it's falling at a rate of minus 20 dB per decade. So that means this will suggest that, uh, you know, as you can see, this is a higher frequency also. This is not a, you know, few hertz. This is 100 kilohertz. And you're going higher and higher. So once you go 3 dB down, let me show it to you. Concentrate on the blue color curve, dark blue color curve. Give me a moment, it's stuck a little. Yeah. So now concentrate over here. Okay. So we have plotted two graphs. This is a frequency response. It's a current gain, right? So here it is a, a you know common emitter current gain, HFE, and HFV is the common base current gain. Okay. So here what are we doing? I mean, what are we investigating over here is that your HFE will vary with the frequency and it will vary as follows. The highest value over here is the mid-band value for HFE. That is HFE mid. Correct? When you go 3 dB down, then you mark one frequency and that frequency is called as F beta or it is also called as F HFE. Okay. This is the beta cutoff frequency. So HFE will drop down at from its mid bond, from its mid band value or uh, HFE mid with a 20 dB per decade flow as shown over here. Okay. So the same plot over here, the same plot will have HFE also. Now, what is HFB? So HFB is nothing but alpha. Okay, it, it's the power. I mean, let me write over here. HFB is nothing but represented in the form of alpha. Alpha is the common emitter. Uh, I mean, common base current gain, right? Where HFE is nothing but beta. Okay, common emitter current gain. This is common base current gain. And this is common emitter current gain, right? So if we plot the same uh, HFE plot also on the same graph, what do we get? So how is HFE defined? Uh, HFB. So whenever HFE becomes unity, okay? Whenever your common emitter current gain becomes unity, you can define over here that the gain, the current gain becomes one. That means zero dB, right? So this value over here is called as the midband value of midband value for HFB. Right. So this is the plot. The red color plot is for mod of HFB. Right. Now, as you can see, the HFB, the cutoff frequency for HFB is much, much higher as compared to F beta. Right. And so if you go 3 dB down below zero, so here it will be minus 3 dB. And you look at this point, this is called as 
uh, you know, this point over here is called as FT, which is the transition frequency. Okay. Now, this transition frequency is defined at 0 dB. At 0 dB, if you extrapolate the point, this is the transition frequency. Whenever the current gain, whenever the current gain becomes unity, that time we can define this transition frequency or unity gain frequency. When in this uh, HFB curve, when it becomes 3 dB down, that particular frequency is called as F alpha or HFB. Okay, it is very, very clear and it's very, very high value, right? It, it, it's going towards 1 gigahertz, right? So it indicates that a small change in HFB here, as you can see, the midband, the mid, uh, the midband value for HFB is much higher, whereas the midband value for HFB is much lower. So what can you note? A small change in HFB for a chosen frequency range, it indicates that the common base configuration displays an improved frequency response characteristic over the common emitter configuration. This is why the common base High frequency parameters are mentioned rather than the common emitter common uh, common emitter parameters are often specified for transistors. Okay, so that's why in the data sheets they give normally the common base high frequency parameter. Okay, like for example F T or F alpha, right? So these parameters are mentioned in the data sheet value. Is this very very clear? Right? Again, I repeat. This, there are two plots over here. One is for mod of HFP, that is the current gain for the common emitter configuration, and mod of HFB, which is the current gain for the common base configuration. And these two plots reveal that there are three frequencies, higher frequencies. One is the F beta, which is the beta cutoff frequency. It is also called as HFE. One is the transition frequency, which is the unity gain bandwidth, right? Here the current wind becomes unity. And this FT is also called as the transition frequency. And uh, another frequency we have whenever the midband value for HFB falls by 3 dB down. Okay. That particular frequency is called as F of HFB or F alpha. Okay. So these are the three frequencies which we have to, you know, recognize in this frequency response. Now, since it supports the x axis, supports such a large frequency range, normally the x axis is logarithmic. Okay, so this is basically log of f when we plot it on the frequency or, or the semi log plot. Okay, so this briefs you about this, uh, you know, uh, graph is a is tells you that how the current gain for the common emitter and the common base configuration will behave versus frequencies in the very high frequency region. Okay, so its description is written below. You all can refer it. Okay, so that was the inference from this HFE and HFV versus frequency in the very, very high frequency region. And over here, we saw the behavior of the current gain for both the common emitter and the common base configuration, right? Now, uh, there are three important things which we have to note. Beta cutoff frequency, F beta, FT, which is the unity gain bandwidth, and HF, uh, F of F alpha or F HFB, okay? So these are the three frequencies which we have to note down. Remember that HF, uh, F HFB or F alpha is greater than FT and FT is greater than F beta. Okay, so always remember that. So its description is given below over here, right? Whatever we have said, we have written over here. We have already discussed that. Only one point uh, which was left out was this. There is an equation which relates a direct conversion for determining F beta cutoff, I mean, uh, beta cutoff frequency. Okay, so normally your uh, alpha cutoff frequency, F alpha, and the alpha value are normally specified in the BJT data sheet. So we can determine the beta cutoff frequency by this relation. F beta is given by uh, F alpha into one minus alpha. Okay, this becomes equation number 1.12. And this completes the topic of beta cutoff frequency variation with uh, variation with the biasing configuration. Okay, now let's move on quickly towards the uh, attention to the unity gain frequency or the bandwidth derivation. 
So now we'll move on to the FT derivation for a BJT. So FT is nothing but the transition frequency or the unity gain frequency of bandwidth. It is defined as the frequency at which the current gain of the BJT becomes unity or zero dB. And it is the figure of merit for a bipolar transistor. So let's continue our discussion from where we have left. So over here in the high frequency range, we have seen up till F beta, right? Up till F beta, we know what happens. Now, now the gain, I mean, the current gain continues to fall further down. Let me show it to you over here. As you can see, as you go on at a higher and higher frequency, the gain will continue to fall down. I mean, the gain is the current gain, HFE value, right? At F equal to FT, at a particular frequency F equal to FT, the current gain becomes unity or zero dB. So when that happens, that particular frequency is called as the unity gain frequency or the transition frequency, right? So let's see what happens next. So that means we have to equate mod of HFE is equal to beta naught, which is equal to one. I mean, beta naught divided by square root of one plus FT upon F beta, the whole square, that is equal to one. That means uh, we know that FT value is much, much larger as compared to F beta, maybe 100 times larger. So that's why we can ignore that FT upon F beta is much, much greater than compared to one. So in the denominator, we'll ignore one and we can easily write mod of HFE is equal to beta naught divided by FT upon F beta, which is equal to one. So beta naught will be FT upon F beta, okay? So therefore we can write FT is equal to beta naught into F beta. That means if we know the beta cutoff frequency, we can find the unity gain frequency by this formula. Okay, if we know the beta naught value. Beta naught is the low frequency current gain for a BJT. So now what is the inference of this? Normally in the data sheet, the FT, that is the unity gain frequency of a BJT or a transistor is usually specified on the device data sheet. So also beta naught value or the beta DC value is normally given to you. So your beta cutoff frequency of the transistor can be determined using this formula. F beta is equal to FT divided by beta naught, where beta naught is the low frequency current gain. Okay. So normally uh, specified parameters in the data sheet are the unity gain frequency and beta naught. Now, what is FT, uh, F beta written as? F beta is one upon two pi R pi into C pi plus C mu, right? So over here, we know that uh, beta naught value is GM into R pi. We have discussed that before, right? So beta naught upon R pi will be equal to GM. So here we have beta naught and R pi in the denominator. So FT can be written as GM divided by uh, two pi into C pi plus C mu. So please note down this equation. This is very, very important while solving small numericals. Okay, so your unit again frequency FT is given by GM divided by 2 pi into C mu plus C pi into C mu plus C pi. Okay. So let's solve a numerical based on the analysis what we have done so far. So for a BJT, it is biased at 1 milliampere. Beta naught value is given as 150. C pi value is 4 picofarad. CPU, C mu value is 0.5 picofarad. So we have to find the beta cutoff frequency and the unity gain frequency. So let's start solving this numerical. Let's solve this numerical. So in the first step we can write, so first we can write GM is given by IT, uh, IC divided by VT. Now normally VT value is how much? VT value is 26 millivolt. Okay. And IC value is given as 1 milliampere. So your GM value will be 1 milliampere divided by 26 millivolt. That will be around uh, 38.46 milliampere per volt. Let me cross check this once in the new, uh, calculator. 1 divided by 26. Yeah. 38.46 milliampere per volt is the correct answer. Okay. Fine. Let's proceed ahead and find out the value of their beta cutoff frequency. So F beta can be written as one divided by, okay, one divided by two pi into R pi 
into c pi plus c mu. So c pi and c mu value is known. R pi value is not known. So from here we'll calculate R pi. R pi is beta v t divided by i c, right? Now what is the value of beta? Beta is one fifty, correct? V t is around twenty six millivolt. And IC value is around one milliampere, so one fifty into twenty six millivolt divided by one milliampere, and with that you will get the value of R pi as R pi will come out to be three point nine kilo ohms. Okay, so now in this equation we have R pi as three point nine kilo ohms. C pi and C mu values are given to you, right? So C pi value is how much? C pi value is. Let me check it out. C pi value is four picofarad, and C mu value is point pi picofarad. Okay. So these are the values of the capacitors and resistor R pi, right? This is point pi picofarad. Okay. So one upon two pi into three point nine kilo ohms bracket into four picofarad plus point five picofarad, and this result will give. If you solve it in the calculator, you will get the value of f beta as nearby close to nine point zero seven megahertz. Okay, so that's the value of the beta cutoff frequency which you get for this numerical. Now next we have to find out the uh, uh, you know the unity gain frequency F T. Okay, so what was the relation between unity gain frequency and F T? Okay, so uh, let me write F T was given by beta naught times F beta, and beta naught is one fifty. So one fifty into nine point zero seven into ten raised to six. So this we have to multiply. So this after multiplying you will get it as. Let me just uh, correct it out. A moment, please. Yeah. So F T the unit again uh, frequency will be one point three six gigahertz. So as you can see, it's a very high value. It's around one fifty times more than the beta cutoff frequency. And I think that is what was asked in this numerical, right? Yes. So we have completed the numerical. The beta cutoff frequency is 9.07 megahertz, and over here the uh, the unity gain frequency is 1.36 gigahertz. Fine. So with this, uh, we complete the topic of the beta cutoff frequency derivation, the unity gain frequency derivation for a BJT, and we have also solved the numerical. Okay. So now let's quickly move on to the unity gain frequency derivation for a MOSFET. Okay. So let me open another whiteboard. Fine. So we'll complete that discussion today itself. Let me go over here. Let me select uh, AC lecture number twelve point two topic. Yeah. So it's. Uh, Yeah, it's it's been loaded. Let me reduce the. Yeah. So now, welcome to analog electronic circuits. Let's like continue lecture number twelve. That is twelve point two. So today we will derive the unity gain uh, frequency bandwidth for a MOSFET. Okay. So what is the definition? Its name is transition frequency, as it was in BJT. Its definition is that F T is the frequency at which Uh, the short circuit current gain of a MOSFET becomes unity, or zero dB. Now wait a minute. Short circuit current gain of a MOSFET. How can a current gain is possible in a MOSFET? Just a moment. We'll see that right now. Also, FT is the figure of merit for a high frequency operation for a MOSFET. So let's jump into the curiosity and answer this question. That is current gain possible in a MOSFET? Yes. Since now at extremely high frequency, the input impedance of a MOSFET is not finite. Okay, so let's see that right now why it is not finite. So far we have considered that you know between the at low frequencies, huh? 
at low and mid frequency so far we have considered let me draw the uh, you know the model right so so far we have considered that this is my let me change the color this is my gate drain and source so so far now we have considered that between the gate and source is open circuit and we just write the voltage vgs but at very high frequency i mean we have considered this because we have considered the gate current is zero but at very high frequency what happens there comes capacitance also into picture so there will be a cgs capacitance parasitic capacitance and cgs o which is the overlap capacitance so because of these two capacitances what will be the impedance offered by this capacitance impedance offered by any capacitance will be given by xc is equal to 1 upon sc so here in this case there are two capacitors in parallel so we can write xc is equal to 1 upon s we can replace it by j omega so 1 upon j omega into cgs plus cgs o right so now the impedance is a function of frequency so now if you go to a very high frequency this becomes my input impedance now my gate current is not equal to zero at very high frequency your xn will become 1 upon j omega into cgs plus cgs o that means at a very high value of omega that is the angle of frequency your xn is finite that means your input impedance at a very high frequency is non zero okay understood because of the presence of this parasitic and overlap capacitance so that's why we say that the input impedance of a mosfet is finite due to the presence of parasitic capacitance cgs and cgso thus at higher frequencies the current gain of the mosfet is defined correct so please uh, you know have this concept very very clear because normally so far we have considered that for low frequency and mid frequency the gate current is zero and the input impedance is infinite but now it is finite and the gate current is non zero because of the presence of the parasitic capacitance and the overlap capacitances right therefore there is a definition of the current gain at uh, of uh, you know mosfet at higher frequency now let's jump into the derivation for the unity gain frequency for uh, mosfet so the unity gain frequency or the bandwidth is the figure of merit for the mosfet next to calculate the unity gain frequency we draw the equivalent high frequency model for the mosfet so in this equivalent high frequency model for the mosfet we consider the parasitic capacitances between the gate and the source we have cgs between the gate and the drain we have cgd again a parasitic capacitance between the drain and the source we have gm into vgs and we short circuit the drain terminal and the signal ground this ground over here is my signal ground okay this is not a dc ground it's a ac ground signal ground okay and here what is my output current output current is drain current id and what is my input current input current flows over here because of the presence of this non zero impedance at the input side okay so your input is uh, i mean vgs your output is short circuited drain uh, i mean uh, we sort the drain terminal and the signal ground and uh, we have this definition so the current flowing through cgs will be i1 current flowing through cgd will be i2 right current flowing into the gate terminal will be ii or we can also call it as ig that will also do but let us call it as ii and the current flowing into the drain terminal is uh, id now since the input impedance is no longer infinite at higher frequencies we have seen that now we can define the short circuit current gain right so what is the short circuit current gain given by let me write over here it is given by ai okay and in this case it will be output current id divided by the input current ii so that is what we are supposed to find for from this derivation we are supposed to find the ratio of id divided by ii okay so in the first step in solving that is applying kcl at node g okay at the gate terminal g so what are the incoming currents incoming current is i i outgoing currents are i1 and i2 right so how can we write over here i1 is equal to i1 i mean i i is equal to i1 plus i2 now what is i1 i1 is nothing but i1 is nothing but here the voltage over here is vgs 
So VGS divided by the impedance offered by this capacitance. And what is the impedance offered by this capacitance? One upon S into CGS. So that is what we have written over here. Uh, I1 is VGS divided by one upon S into CGS. Okay. Similarly, what will be I2? I2 will be VGS minus zero because here it is grounded, right? So VGS divided by the impedance offered by the capacitance CGD, which is one upon S times CGD. So here I2 will be VGS divided by one upon S times CGD. Okay. Which can be simplified as II is equal to VGS into this SCGS and SCGD will go up. You will have inside the bracket SCGS plus SCGD. Next step we have, we can take S also common. So II is equal to VGS into CGS plus CGD into S. And this we call equation number 1.1. Now next we applied a KCL at the drain node. Okay. So what will the drain node KCL gives you? In the drain node, we have uh, two incoming currents, ID and I2, right? What is I2? Uh, VGS divided by uh, one upon S into CGD. And we have another current, which is, uh, you know, leaving the drain terminal is GM into VGS. So ID plus I2 is equal to GM into VGS. So that is what we have written. ID plus I2 is equal to GM into VGS, where I2 is VGS divided by one upon SCGD, right? Plus ID is equal to GM into VGS. And if we cross multiply, we'll take, uh, you know, ID on this side and rest all the terms on the other side, we'll get GM minus S into CGD. This S into CGD will go up, right? So VGS being common, we can write GM minus S into CGD is equal to ID. And now we know that the short circuit current gain AI is ID upon II. So from equation number 1.2, we have ID and equation number 1.1, we have II. So we'll divide them. So what do we get? AI is equal to VGS into GM minus S into CGD divided by S into VGS into CGS plus CGD. So from your VGS, VGS gets cancelled and you will get GM minus S into CGD divided by S into CGS plus CGD. And for physical frequencies, we write S equal to J omega. So AI is equal to, AI is the current gain, which is a frequency dependent, is given by GM minus uh, JW into C, uh, GD divided by JW into J, J omega, J omega into CGS plus CGD. We call this equation number 1.3. Now recalling that the CGS, CGD value is small at the frequency of interest. So let's say typically GM value is one milliampere per volt. CGD value is let's say 10 femtofarad. Femto is 10 raised to minus 15. And frequency is one gigahertz, right? So what will be omega CGD? It will be two pi f into CGD, which will be 0 0.0628 into 10 raised to minus three, right? Which is much, much less as compared to one milliampere, okay? That's why your GM value, uh, I mean, GM value is much, much greater as compared to omega CGD. Therefore, in the above formula, instead of GM minus J omega CGD, we can write just, J, uh, just GM, okay? So therefore, uh, we can, uh, since G, uh, GM is much, much greater than omega CGD, we can write over here, it leads to GM minus omega CGD is approximately equal to GM itself. So we can write this equation mod of AI will be approximately equal to GM divided by J omega. Omega, we can substitute 2 pi f into CGS plus CGD. Okay. So now uh, from this equation, we can write at F equal to FT. At F equal to FT, we have the AI as gain as one. So that's the definition, right? Uh, that, that, that's the definition of FT, right? is defined as the frequency at which the magnitude of the short circuit current gain goes to one, okay? So that frequency is called as your transition frequency or the unity gain frequency. So we'll equate this current gain equal to one. So one is approximately equal to GM upon two pi FT into uh, CGS plus CGD. So FT will be approximately equal to GM divided by two pi into CGS plus CGD, okay? 
and when we plot this uh, you know the frequency response of the current gain versus the frequency whenever the current gain becomes unity or zero db we can easily define this the unity gain frequency or f or transition frequency so what are the observations from here observations are the ft is a parameter of the transistor which is a mosfet and this usually is given in the data sheet so this unity gain frequency ft is normally given in the data sheet of the mosfet ft is independent of the circuit okay fine ft is proportional to gm and it's inversely proportional to the capacitance cgs and cgd that means if the cgs and cgd value are more it will limit the band and typically the ft values are 100 megahertz for older technologies which are using 5 micrometer as the uh, you know 5 micrometer cmos process and nowadays for high speed circuit for 130 nanometer cmos process the ft value has increased to 5 to 10 gigahertz okay so with this we complete the derivation of the unity gain frequency or unity gain bandwidth for a mosfet ft is given by gm divided by 2 pi into cgs plus cgd just remember this formula okay now let's quickly solve a numerical and then we'll conclude to this lecture so consider an n channel mosfet with parameters kn given as 0.2 milliampere per volt square vtn is 1 volt lambda is 0 CGD is 0.02 picofarad, CGS is 0.25 picofarad. Assume that the transistor is biased at ID equal to 0.5 milliampere. We have to calculate the unity gain bandwidth for the MOSFET. So for that we have to use the calculate the GM value. So solution GM is given by twice KN VGS minus VTM. Now there is one more formula for GM because over here ID is not given, right? So we can write GM is equal to square root of ID into KN. So over here ID value is given to you. ID value is around 0.4 milli and KN value is around 0.2 milli. So you substitute this in your calculators. You will get value of GM equal to 0.5657 milliampere per volt. Okay, that's the value of GM. And once we know the value of GM, we can easily calculate the unity gain bandwidth, which is FT is equal to GM divided by 2 pi into CGD plus CGS. Okay, and over here CGD, CGS values are given. Uh, I think, uh, let me just cross check. Yeah, so both the values are given to you. CGD is given as around 0 0.02 pico. Okay, and uh, yeah, sorry for that. It is 0 0.02 pico, and CGS value is given as 0 0.25 pico. And GMB calculated just now it's 0.56 milli. So if you plug in all the values over here, you will get the value of FT as the unity gain uh, bandwidth or the frequency we can call it FT is equal to, let me just go down and write that. Okay, one last step. So your FT, your unity gain bandwidth is given by, if you plug in all the values, you will get it as 333.46 megahertz. So that's the value of the unity gain bandwidth. And with this, we have come to the end of this session. We have completed the unity gain bandwidth expression derivation for a MOSFET, and we have solved a simple numerical on the same. So that's all for today's session. Next time, we will start with multi stage amplifier concept. So until then, have a good day and thank you.